you can't hear from me if you're doing all the talking. He says, quit making excuses, shut up and move. Are you getting this? Are you getting this? And you saying, but God, you don't, my, you don't know my situation. The plans that I had in the past, they failed, and I don't know what to do, and I don't have any plans. God said, don't sweat that, for I know the plans that I have for you. All right, that's it. Plans to what? Prosper you. All right. Now, the last time we were together, the last time we were together, I poured my heart out and tried to teach you this thing that God told me and he told me to teach you then was to get back up. I made it a point to make sure you understood the importance of no matter who knocked you down, how you got knocked down, where you got knocked down, why you got knocked down, it is absolutely imperative and important that you do what? Get back up. So what happened is the body of Christ received that message. They got to get back up down. All across the body of Christ, folks are just getting back up. But here is what happened. They received the get back up message. They got knocked down, they got back up. But what we saw is not only did they get back up, the problem is that many of them got up, but they did not move. They just got up. They got up from whatever they went through, but they still didn't move. So the Holy Spirit is saying, I want you to continue this teaching but I want you to take it to another level. I want you to tell them that not only must they get back up, but it's imperative that they move. Y'all got that? Y'all got that? So now, what I'm going to try to teach you tonight is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use this Word of God, and since we all are disciples of Christ, strong believers of the Word of God, followers of His Word, I'm going to create a common denominator case with all the evidence right before you so you can see one key simple formula, and it's going to be just like this. God spoke, they moved. And before I finish tonight, I pray that you are not just moved but provoked to hear God's word and then move. Amen? Amen? So now, there is absolutely nothing more disturbing to me and God for an individual to have so much gifts, so much talents, and so much skill and do absolutely nothing with it. Y'all know folks like that, right? I mean, God has given you all the skill, all the intellect, all the gifts, all the talents, equipped you very well to do it, and you still won't move. And what's disturbing about that is that you just might have the cure to an incurable disease. Amen. You might have the answer to today's economic distress. You just might have inside of you, you now, you might have right inside of you the answer to bring this nation to her finest hour, but you won't move. You all caught up with your day-to-day -day issues. You're distracted by Satan, and he's throwing you off your predetermined destiny and making excuses of why you can't and why you won't move. And God is saying, that's selfish. And you say, well, how is that selfish? That's selfish because you were created by God for God. And he gave you a purpose, and he gave you an appointed assignment. He brought you here to do something. You say, well, how do you know that, preacher? You don't know me. I'm a first-time visitor. You ain't never seen me before. I don't have to know you. I know the Word of God. And I know what the Word of God says about you. And God says very simple in Jeremiah. He says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. He says that. He says, before you were born, I what? I set you apart. He says, I appointed you. That sounds like to me, you got an assignment. So he appointed you an assignment. He knew that this world would have a problem. He equipped you to solve the problem. He sent you here for such a time as this to take care of the problem, and you still won't move. That's a problem. That's a problem. That's a problem. So God is saying, I put you here for a reason. He's saying, I put some stuff in you. And he is saying, I want my stuff. I want what I put in you. 
I equipped you with something to do something for me. And he's saying, I want it back. Amen. Amen. Are y'all getting this? Are y'all getting this? I'm just setting the groundwork now. So God is saying to the people out there, he's saying, listen. He says, I taught you how simple it was to get back up. Now I want to make sure you understand how powerful it is for you to move. He's saying, body of Christ, you need to move. Saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. So what? You need to move. Anointed to sing. Appointed to lay hands on people. Does not matter. You need to move. Blessed to be a blessing. Does not matter if you don't what? Body of Christ. God is talking to you. He says, I didn't tell you to wait on me. See, I'm going to expose that myth tonight. I know all y'all want to go to Isaiah, wait on the Lord and you renew your strength. I'm going to show you what God is saying about that. He says, I didn't tell you to wait on me. He says, dissect my name. If you spell it G-O-D, the first two letters say go. If you read it backwards, the last two letters say do. So he's saying go, do, go, do, go, do, go, do. Do what, Lord, do what? Do what I told you to do. Do what I sent you here to do. And if you can't do that, do what you saw me do. Jesus said, I come to do my Father's will. And you still sitting around talking about you waiting on the Lord. And God is saying, don't wait on me. I didn't give you everything that you need. There's everything you need in you. And God is saying that all you got to do is use it. So now I want to show you something. I want to teach this to you real quick. God is saying, I put so much inside of you. He says that I put everything that you need to succeed inside of you in the beginning. There ain't nothing else I can give you. You got everything that you need already inside of you to do what I called you to do. He's saying, I blessed you. Are y'all hearing me? He says, I already did. I blessed you. Well, how do you know he blessed me? The Bible says, blessed is a man that does not walk with the sinners. Are y'all with me? Okay, hold on. Y'all put that up there. Psalm, I love this high tech stuff. I ain't got to read the Bible. It's right on the screen. Put Psalms 101 up there. I got to make sure y'all get this because we read this and we read this too fast and we miss the revelation. And I don't want you to miss the revelation of what he's saying in Psalms 1 and 1. Yes, you are blessed. Yes, you will prosper. That's all intact. That is going to happen. But you have got to understand that there's a purpose for him saying what he said. Let's read it. Blessed is the man that does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of the sinner or sit in the seat of the mockers. Keep going. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. Keep going. He is like a tree planted by the streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not proper stop. Whatever he does, prosper. See, don't be so quick to get to the prosper part. The prosper is going to be there. The prosper is already promised. But what he says before he says prosper, he says, whatever he does, prosper. I love King James. Our James says, so whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. It doesn't mean, it doesn't say what he think. It doesn't say what he planned. It doesn't say what he write down. It doesn't say what he dream. It doesn't say what he tell his mama about. It doesn't say what he been telling his wife about for 10 years. It said, whatsoever he do, prosper. And so God is saying that I put it in you already. So in other words, there got to be some doing before there's some prospering. Amen? Y'all get that? Y'all get that? So don't, 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 don't lose that revelation because God wants you to make sure you get this. Now, I want to teach you something else. I want, to, I want to expose a myth that the body of Christ has had forever. Put Isaiah 40 and 28 on the screen, and this time put it in King James. Now, I know there's an EOC bylaw that said we shall only read, thou shall read NIV forever. <laughs> But the only reason I'm going to put it up in King James is because I know when you read it, it'll come to you, your remembrance. Amen? So get up there for me. I got up there? All right. Start at 28, please. 
It said, Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, faineth not, neither is he weary.